What's going on boys, no guys here, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to go over the weekly tactic update. As usual I'm going to go through each and every tactic and formation and explain to you the most attacking and the most defensive option. Um, we've gone for a different kind of style this week because let's be honest, it's July. Is there anything really to play for? Not really. So if you're used to getting let's say 18 and 0, you might get 17, okay? But if you're not on the element of having fun, you're better off just not even... Um, watching this video because it's definitely going to be for those that want to go towards the attacking route. I put some of the most attacking formations that I really, really like this year. And I'll be honest, I think it's pretty much the way to go. I don't see why anyone would want to park the bus in July unless right now you're playing for the E-World Cup and you're trying to practice for qualifiers. But anyway, um, the first one we have is the 4 3 one, two. Um, as I mentioned in my video yesterday, the 3-4-1-2 and the 4-3-1-2 are very, very similar. If you like to bring the left back and right back forward in this formation, you might as well just use the 3-4-1-2. So if you want to, you can put my regular 4-2-3-1 down over here if you want to. If not, just copy these tactics. It's basically quite a balanced tactic. You can always change the midfield to make it a bit more defensive. Long ball, direct passing. And the players in the box, you can increase this to 7 if you like to cross the ball in. In terms of the instructions, so... Um, I have for both strikers stay forward, get in behind. No stay central for this because sometimes I like them to go down the wing. Like if you do it like a through ball from your right mid, let's say down the wing, sometimes you want that to happen. Um, that's one of the reasons why. And what I do is I put two main strikers here, and then what I do is I put, for example, a CDM in the middle and like two centimeters. Now, what you can do is um, the cams on stay forward, get into the box for a cross. Now, um, because this is basically the defensive formation, as you can see, my left centre mid and right centre mid, they're both unbalanced. If you struggle with this and let's say you're like, you know what, no, I need to actually have a defensive formation. I can't just be attacking the entire game. Then just put both of these guys on stay back while attacking and that will resolve the issue entirely. You'll have three players stay back while attacking to be able to defend against most formations. CDMs on, well, this is basically like a CDM. Ideally, a medium high work rate here. Stay back, to the edge of the box, cover centre. Left back, right back, stay back, conservative and overlap. I still, to be honest, go down conservative and overlap. I, I, I mean, overlap always stays there, but conservative, I, sometimes I change it with team decisions. Do you really need it? But then sometimes your player just, you know, let's say, example, someone's making a pass from A to B. Sometimes your AI would just try to jump and try to get the ball. And I don't want that. And I think on balance, sometimes they do that. And then you end up having taken a long time to then run back and recover against your opponent. So again, just a personal preference of mine. I always keep changing between that. I should just keep it on conservative, I would say. Then we're over to the 3-5-2. Theoretically, this should be probably in the most defensive slot because the way it is. Um, but I rather put a back four in the defensive slot. This is a back five when you're defending. And you defend in a 5-2-1-2 and you attack. And of course, a 3-5-2. Um, some bit changes, but long ball forward runs. Very much everything is kept consistent, really. Um... Just be mindful now of shapeshifters. A lot of players are really, really good in using these, you know, these five-star, five-star ball roll scoop nonsense. So I'm basically decreasing the width just to get a bit more, um, be a bit more solidified in the central areas. Um, strikers stay central, stay forward. Um, cam on, stay forward, get into the box for cross. You're going to have three guys on the stay back, five at the back and two CDMs to defend. Um, again, you can always put your strike on combat defense if you want to defend in a three, but you don't really need to do that. Um, if you can do it if you want to. Left mid, right mid, come back in the fence, get it behind, get into the box for a cross. Both CDMs on cut passing lane, step up while attacking cover centre. Left centre back and right centre back on overlap. So to be honest, this would be the formation probably used most of the game. I, as I said to you since the game has come out, guys, this is the best formation both offensively and defensively. It's still there. It still trumps most formations. It can trump the 4-2-3-1 except for you lose that midfield presence and that is why that strike on come back in the fence can make it very, very useful. Then for the 3 4 2 this is the video, um, sorry, that I made actually, uh, this one that I made yesterday. It's one that I released, um, actually no, it's stop. Well, it's one that I thought about when the game came out, but I didn't like it over the 3 5 2 So the simple fact, it never had CDMs and I've always been a big fan of CDMs. So think of this like a more attacking version of this, um, but this attacks in a front five. There's no other formation in FIFA, to my knowledge, unless I'm very much mistaken, that attacks in a flat five. Because you have like the 3-5-2, but the, the, the cam is behind the striker. There's not an actually a five-man five straight forward. Even a 3-1-4-2 doesn't give you that. This formation does, and that's why it's so effective. You don't believe me, put all these players on stay forward, and you're going to see it's going to be a front fan of five up front. 
And basically you have a five versus five, your opponent's got a back five or a five versus four, he's got a back four. And it's basically impossible to not score. You're always going to find someone free. Your opponent might deflect a shot, but it's impossible to not get a chance. If you're sitting here and you're not a good player, if you can't attack with this formation, you know the issue is definitely with your build-up play. Um, but anyway, these are our tactics for that. I wouldn't recommend pressure on every touch, even though this is an attacking tactic. To leave it unbalanced, in my opinion. Um, I just did some... Um, not really, nothing really has changed from yesterday, to be honest. Um, as I said, you can use long ball if you want to, but don't do it. Because what happens is the team moves a bit too fast. You want them to move a bit too slow. And you've got the left mid and right mid and get it behind anyway. Now... Because this is my attacking tactic, there's nothing funky going on here. We just got the same tactics from yesterday. I'm not going to go over them because I went over them yesterday. So I'm going to save you some time. Stay forward, stay central, get it behind. Balance for the attacker. Get it behind for the other striker. Uh, left mid and right mid, both on comeback and defense. Get it behind and get into the box for cross. People ask me about hug the sidelines. You can use hug the sidelines whenever you want. In fact, if you're part of my patrons, I'll be uploading a video very soon. Hopefully by the end of today about how to use a, the 3412. But if you haven't joined a Patreon, so don't forget you still can join patreon.com forward slash nil guys. There'll be a video hopefully by today, by the time you watch this video, updated on how to attack with the 3421. Um, but don't forget, if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. Hundreds of videos, as I said, as usual, a full money back guarantee. But you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. That is how confident I am. Um, link is down below in the description and it's pinned in a comment section down below. Loads of videos there. And um, looking forward to for 23. Preparation for that as well. Um, so we have that on the left mid and right mid. Both center mids. Now these guys are center mids. Ideally, if you can get like a medium high, like a Kante here, it's ideal. Somewhere at least higher defensive work rates. One of them on stay back, stand the edge and cover center. So you've got one guy always back. And then you have one guy on stay back, stand the edge and cover center. Now what you can do is you can put one of these guys on balanced if you want to. Um, I don't think you need it because you already have front five. But if you want to add one more play into the mix, you got a six versus four. And that is why I say don't use long ball because the average player, the truth is, they will struggle. Even, even I, myself, struggle to find I think even a lot of top tier players, because of long ball, they'll struggle to find it when too many players are moving too quick and you end up having on Yeka isolated. So people are asking me about that. So I would leave them both on stay back, in my opinion. If you want to push them forward manually at the right time when you're recycling the ball outside the box, then... But with the, f the front five fan, listen guys, it's going to be probably one of the best formations to get the ball to the strikers. It's kind of up to you inside the box the way that you play um, to get into the final third. Overlapping both the left center back and right center back. Now, 3-4-1-2. Now, this is a very, very attacking formation. Think of this like the 3-5-2, but without CDMs, you have center mids. So the center mids are even further forward, and of course, it makes it easier for you to attack now i would say take this with a grain of salt because i know in fact i probably scroll down right now if someone's going to comment about this because they just skip to the tactics they don't listen people are going to struggle with this formation if you don't like this just change to the 442 it's because you defend with the back three okay now when you're pressing i'll explain to you what i've done what i'd recommend is put basically um, one of the strikers on comeback and defense. That way, when you're defending, you want to defend in a five. So this would be a back line of five. And then Cancelo ends up becoming here. Bruno goes here. And Yeka goes over there like that. The reason why you want this is when you're pressing, you want to press together. Okay. But you want to press in a 4 4 2 is the best way to press. When the left back and right back go back, you don't just want two center mids in a back line of five. Because your opponent is going to be... Anyone above Division 3 is going to be small. Maybe not Division 3. I would say... Let's say like a legitimate Division 2 player who genuinely understands the game. Because obviously every, anyone will get to Division 1. But I mean like their mentality to understand the game. Um, of like if someone's got, for example, three players on stay forward. Am I going to pass them between those lines? A lot of people actually don't, actually don't do that. But let's just say around the Division 3, Division 2. When people really understand the game a lot. They're going to see you've got three players on stay forward. They're not just going to sit there and hold the ball. They're going to be playing in between your centre mids and your front three. So you got to be really, really careful about this. So that's why we put Cancelo on comeback and defense. So he makes a midfield three. So when you're pressing, you press in a 5-3-1-1. One, one. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, so we've got both. One, one strike on stay forward, stay central, aggressive interceptions. 
that's just because the, the, the further strike is not really doing anything because you're going to be controlling the cam most of the time if the ball's in the middle of the pitch. So why not just put him on aggressive? You need to win the ball back anyway. Um, I don't put him on getting behind. Um, you can if you want to. Um, but because he's the furthest player forward, I kind of leave him on balance. The AI will decide to push him forward if he wants to. And he's on long ball anyway, so he's still going to be making those runs most of the time. The other strike on stay central, come back on offense. As I mentioned, um, this is the guy that drops into the midfield. Then you have the cam on stay forward, get into the box for cross. You cannot make it defend, for example, in a 5-3-2, in case you're wondering. So this guy has to be on stay forward. Um, I've tried it. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked for many years. So I put him on stay forward, get into the box for a cross. Left mid, right mid, come back on the fence, get it behind, um, get into the box for a cross. As, you, as usual, no aggressive interceptions here. This is important. When you're pressing with this formation, if you lose the ball, you're going to struggle with a 3 versus 3 at the back. So you don't want to be using aggressive interceptions with these guys, although it seems logical. you got constant pressure anyway. So be very careful and be mindful of that. And that is why I say if you struggle with this on constant pressure, just go to a 4-4-2. If you're sitting here like, you know what, you know, I tried it for a game or two. And try it for more than a game because it might just be your opponent's much better than you and that's why you're not working out. But try it for like two or three games. If you're sitting there saying, you know what, this is maybe a bit too much for my play style. Let's say you're like, even if you're like getting rank one now and users and you might, you might even get rank two, it might be too much for you. But then it could be someone out there that might be a rank two player and this could be, make them get a rank one. Does that make sense? So this is more of a personal preference, but I just want to say it out now. And then we have the left centre-back and right centre-back on overlap as usual. So what it is, is that I would typically start... So this is the one I'm going to be using this week. I'll start on a 4-3-1-2. Um, to be honest, me... I mean, I kind of just put it there more for like as an example sake. But I probably will just still go for the 4-2-3-1. Um, I'm going to call it a 4-2-3-1-1. And that's been the extra striker. For those of you that may know what I'm talking about, i got a, I got a custom tactic with the extra striker. So Cancelo joins the attack. So I'm probably just going to dump the 4-2-3-1 there. But if you want to, you can use the 4-3-1 if you want to be more tech. Because I know most of you guys, look, no one's going to be parking a bus in July. If you're parking a bus in July, what are you doing, in my opinion? Then you have the defensive, which is probably the one you probably be using for most of the game. Then you have the front five at the front. And then you have the ultra attacking constant pressure tactic. So it's a different dynamic, but you still have the same procedure. We've just gone for more of the attacking route as opposed to defensive route. Because if I really, really wanted to... Um, now, it's no point just showing you like some 5-4-1 defensive tactic. Is it even worth it? Do I, do I even want to play people playing against that way? Um, works for both old gen and new gen. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what kind of tactics you want to see though. Um, I, have some, I have some few other tactics that I haven't really yet released. That I've experimented with. Um, the 3-1-4-2, it's not as good as it, my original blitz tactic as it once was. I don't know why they nerfed that formation. There's a couple of other ones that I do have, not too many, but I might just release a new tactic every single week and just, I'll just say, you know what, enjoy it until the game comes out. I'm taking a bit of a break now in terms of content. I'm just getting ready up for the 20 hour days when it comes to September, October, November. So I'm just taking it a bit easy, but let me know what kind of content you want to see. I might do Friday night content as well. Um, but interesting to kind of see what you guys want. Uh, maybe I'll do some mining elite players and walkthroughs of the formations. I'm thinking of that. Um, but let me know if you're looking for anything in particular. I know most of you guys just look forward to just trying out new tactics. And I think uh, the best thing about tactics, I think, is um, I release tactics, you try out, you know what works for you, and then you just slot it in yourself. So if I if I release this, if you're sitting in, you know the 4 2 3 one and the 5 2 one 2 has to go in, we maybe give this a go, and you'd be like, you know what, Neil, 4 2 one over here. And the, the one that you like the least out of these three, you just replace with a 5 2 one 2 And that's the beautiful thing is that we're kind of working towards, I'm giving you different styles, and you're choosing the best one for your own place. And that's kind of what I want to walk, walk towards in the end. And the day, the times are just there, to be honest. For the attractiveness of the of the of the video to be honest to get the views i'm not going to sit here and lie um but that's kind of the way going forward um but uh but uh you know honestly using tactics right now i think i'm 10 and 0 um probably not going to reach 20 and 0 um the way the gameplay is going right now um got a pretty weakened team actually as well well not weakened i would say but pretty much outdated um with the shapeshifters so uh i probably need to make some changes it still gets a job done to be on to be honest um but uh, yeah, something I wanted to mention. I really want to probably get a Tekka Tisa card upgraded as well, but we'll see what happens with that. I think Martial Bruno needs to go, definitely. I think these three need to all go. I'm still deciding how we'll go about that. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And of course, I'll catch you next time. Peace out, guys.